All right. So what they want us to do is for this problem, um, they want us to, let's go through this again. They want us to find the vertex, the axis symmetry, the y-intercept, the maximum, minimum, domain and range. That's it? OK. So the first thing that we're going to do to this problem, I always like to find the axis symmetry first. All right? That's, even though the first problem up there says to find the vertex, I believe it's always easy to find the axis of symmetry first. So do you remember the definition of the axis of symmetry? Right. It's the, vertical, it's the vertical line that's going to be symmetrical about our parabola. Do you remember the formula for finding that axis of symmetry? Right. X equals opposite of B divided by 2A. Right? So for this problem, remember, this can be rewritten as F or a quadratic function is all in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So we look at my b, which in this case is a 6, and an a, which is 2a. So therefore, I have opposite of 6 divided by 2 times negative 3, which ends up giving me a positive 1. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 equals positive 1. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph that right here, because it does ask us to graph it. right? So I go over to 1, and I draw a vertical dotted line. Now, what that tells us is, remember, that's what our, that is going to cut our parabola in half. Half my parabola is going to be one side on the axis symmetry. The other half of my parabola is going to be on the other side. right? Now, the next thing is they ask us for the vertex. Now, remember, the vertex is the x coordinate on the vertex is on what line? No? The vertex is actually always going to be on your axis of symmetry. So your vertex is on your axis of symmetry. If you remember, if we looked at graphs, right? there's a parabola, um, there's a parabola. They all have dotted lines, right? They're all in symmetry. Remember, the vertex is your maximum or your minimum point. So you see how the maximum or minimum point goes through your vertex? So the x value of our vertex, first of all, our vertex is a point. It's either a maximum or a minimum. So our vertex is a point. Well, since we know the axis of symmetry is a vertical line, Joe, Alec, we know that the vertex, the x value, Alec, is going to be 1. To so how do I determine, then, what the y value is? Well, we can plug in x to find our, or not our y, but our f of x value. So what I do is I plug in 1 in for x. So therefore, I get negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 3. So therefore, this becomes negative 3 plus 6 minus 3, which is 0. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, they're using y. I'm using a function. OK, but it's the same thing. You just plug in 1. You just plug your x value, your vertex, in for x. And then the output value is going to be your either your y, f of x. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter which way you would represent it. So therefore. Um, write that down. So therefore, we have 0. So now I go to that point, over 1, 0. So that's my vertex. All right? That's either going to be the maximum or the minimum. Now the next thing they say is find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, remember, is, well, really, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses our y-axis. Now we are talking about a function, so we could call this the f of x-axis. But we more commonly remember the y a it as the y-axis. However, it is a function, so that's why I'm saying the f of x-axis is kind of interchangeable. We could really represent this as the f of x-axis. So at this axis, what is my x value? So if I had a point on this line, what would the x value be of that point? Zero. So to find the y-intercept, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug zero in for x. So therefore, I have negative 3 times 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 3. Therefore, f of 0 equals negative 3. So I go down to negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and I make a dot. Then the next point it says is determine the maximum or the minimum. So the maximum and the minimum goes by some rules. And the rules for the maximum and min are determined by your a. If a is less than 0, that means the value of a is less than 0. Then, if a is less than 0, therefore, you're going to have a, a maximum point. And if a is greater than 0, you're going to have a minimum point. 
or I'm sorry, your, that means your vertex is either going to be the max or the minimum. So we look at our a, and our a is equal to negative 3. Is negative 3 greater than or less than 0? Less than 0. So therefore, this is going to be a max. That means my graph is not going to travel higher than 0. All right? Um, then the last thing is, OK, so they asked for domain range. They don't give us, uh, we don't have to do a coordinate table. Cool. No, no, no. The y-intercept is negative 3. The maximum point, your vertex, remember, your vertex is always your maximum or your minimum. Always your vertex, remember the vertex is the top or the bottom of your, of your parabola. So that's always going to be your max or your min. All right, so what we have so far is, uh, well, they're not asking for a table of values, so I'm just going to run with what we have. So remember, this is, a, this is a, a line of symmetry, right? Right now, if I wanted to connect these two points, actually, let's, let's figure out one more point. Let's figure out at least two points. I always like to do at least two points to the left and two points to the right. Of your, ver of your axis symmetry. So right now, I have a table. I have 0 is at negative 3. Let's figure out what f of negative 1 is. So if I do f of negative 1, I get negative 3, negative 1 squared, plus 6 times negative 1 minus 3. Because you should, you want to pick at least two values, at least two values to the left and right of your axis symmetry. So therefore, this becomes negative 3 minus 6 minus 3. All right? There you go. Um, so therefore, you have negative 12. So at negative 1, I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Way down there. All right? But what's the cool thing about the axis of symmetry is we know this graph now looks something like this. Right? But remember, the axis of symmetry cuts in in half. So now I can say the next point over would be right there, and the next point over would be down there. So I can now just redraw the mirror image of my parabola. So if you find two, three, four points on one side, you can now reflect those to the other side. All right. So let's talk about domain and range real quick. So the domain, as you look at this graph, this graph is pretty skinny, but it's going to go down forever, right? And as it's going to go down forever, it's going to keep on getting wider and wider and wider and wider. There's nothing that's going to stop it from getting wider and wider. So therefore, the domain is what we like to call all real numbers, from negative infinity to infinity. All values between negative infinity and infinity. Those are three different ways we can write domain. All right. Then you look at the range. The range is not all real numbers, though. The range goes infinitely down to negative, but does, how far does it go? It only goes up. It has a maximum value, right? So it only goes as high up to 0. So therefore, the range is from negative infinity up to 0. Or it's negative, all the values between negative infinity and y and up to 0. So those are two different ways to, you can write the range. All right, Does that kind of see how the difference? Remember, range is dealing with your y values. Domain is dealing with your x values. You just need to write if it's maximum or minimum. But the point, what is that point? The point's your vertex, right? All right? That line, x equals 1. Axis symmetry, x equals 1. 